Let's solve this very interesting question. You have this graph. We'll read this along with all of this information to make sense of this. So this is about a certain corporation, the Harker Corporation, which assigns ratings to every member of its sales staff. When does it do this? At the end of each year. So a year ends, then maybe they review the performance. And then according to that, they assign a rating to every sales staff member. Now, then they tell us how this rating is calculated, what it depends on. First of all, this rating depends on two constants which are calculated for the entire sales staff. What are these two things? One of them is the mean and the second is the standard deviation of what? Of individual sales totals for the year. So what that means is suppose I have n employees and I have individual sales totals for all of them, you know, x1, x2, xn. This is annual sales. Then I will calculate the mean of all of these individual values. This is my mu and I'll calculate the standard deviation of these values. This is my sigma. So this is a constant. Both of these are constants then that I have for this entire sales staff. Now, how do these two decide what the rating is going to be? That's what they tell us further in this formula. They say, if you want to find the individual rating for any employee, you will take the total sales for that particular employee, subtract this mean from that, from this individual total and divide by the standard deviation. So these are the two constants we just talked about. And this is something which is employee specific. Accordingly, the rating is also going to be employee specific. Another thing they tell us is that if you don't get an integer result, then you will round off this rating to the nearest integer. So this is something which I can see here in the graph as well. Look how individual sales ratings are put here on the x-axis. And since these have to be integers, I'm going to see this as a rating of negative 3, a rating of negative 2, all the way till a rating of 3. And here are the years 2009, 10, 11. Since the ratings are assigned at the end of each year, it means I'm looking at the end of 2009, 2010, and 11. And different colors here will help me identify different cases. And this here is the number number with rating. What does that mean? Let me take an example. Say I take the zero rating. Then if I look at zero rating for 2009 at the end of 2009, notice that the blue bar here reaches almost at the top. This is close to 105, maybe 104. This means that in 2009, the ratings that were assigned, 104 employees of the sales staff, 104 members there, they got a rating of zero in 2009. Similarly, if I want to look at 2010 and I want to see how many employees got a rating of one, then I'll look at the gray bar in 2010. So if I read this value, it's 70. So it's 70 number of members who got a rating of 1 in 2010. So that's how we're reading this. Same graph gives you for all three years. Then it tells you one more piece of information that there's a situation in which you consider staff for promotion. It happens if their rating is three. So if I see that here on my graph, rating of three is here at the end. So it's very few employees who will get that. But all of these here, were eligible for promotion or did they definitely get okay they were considered for promotion maybe there were other factors also but these are the only people who would be considered for promotion now these are very few you can read the values here on the y-axis if you want but i'm not going to get too much into data at this stage it's important for me to understand how individual rating is being computed which is here on the x-axis it is being computed by using mean and standard deviation, the two constants, along with individual total sales, which is not a constant, changing person to person. These three things are coming together to give me the individual rating. This structure has to be very clear to us. Then let's go and see what the question is asking. We'll come back here and use data as needed. If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. There are two statements here that you have to fill in. And if you look at both of the statements, they have the same choices. So it's important that we understand what these choices are, how to really understand them. So read it. It says the graph supports, refutes, or nor supports, neither refutes, the claim. The graph does something for the claim that. Then they tell you which claim I am talking about. That means I have to see whether the graph supports the claim or the graph ref refutes the claim or it does nothing. So it's important you understand how the graph will do each of these things. Think, if suppose the graph gives you some proof, it gives you proof that your claim is 
true the claim which is mentioned in the rest of the statement if it gives you proof that the claim is true then that means your graph supports the claim if suppose it gives you proof that claim is false it gives you absolute certain proof no it's absolutely false you will say that the graph refutes the claim then on the other hand if you get no proof in any direction you don't get true you don't get false it's it's mixed in that case your graph does neither of these things it it does not support the claim nor does it refute the claim so this is very very clear this should be very clear in your head because you're going to do this for both the statements so here now i'll read what the claim is then i'll go and look for this proof that we talked about the claim is that sales staff had the fewest members in 2010 so we are really talking about the total members in a certain year you know that every single year has a different color on the graph i'm talking about total members not those who have a specific rating all of them but that's easy to see from here if i know the total number of members for every single rating that I can get for, you know, by looking at the heights, I can get the total also, right? In this case, I don't want the total number. I want to see if it is the fewest in 2010. That means I want to see if this, these gray bars, when I add them, then together, are they all the least total compared to the others? So, if you look at this rating by rating, you will notice that gray is, in this case, the highest. Here also gray is the highest bar. Here also it's the highest bar. So, in these cases, I'm sure the sum, obviously, of all these three is more than for the other years. In these other ratings, it's not always the highest. But still, there is one thing you can observe that your gray bar is always higher than the orange bar. Look at that. It's consistent for every single rating, which means that if I just compare gray and orange, that means just compare 2010 and 11, even in those, I can see that gray is greater than orange. So, 2010 total is going to be more than 2011 total. So, if 2010 total is greater than something else, how can it be the fewest? It cannot have the fewest members. So, my graph has clear proof that this claim is false because of which I'm going to mark refutes here and move on. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, the way we applied translate process skills so comfortably in this question, in the EGMAT course, you will learn how to build this translate process skill through purpose-built exercises. Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. Then let's look at what the second question is asking. And here you go. The same structure, you have a certain claim that as a group, staff's total sales were highest in 2011. You again have to see support, refute or neither of those. So I have to see if there's a way for me to tell that in 2011, total sales were the highest. So look at your graph here. What you have here is the number of members. That is something you can very easily read by looking at the heights of your bars. So if they ask something about number of members in 2011, I would be able to do that. But right now they're asking for the total sales for 2011 and all you have are these individual ratings. Essentially, individual ratings is what I have and they want me to go back to individual sales here for every member first, then find the total of all of these sales. I cannot even go back to individual sales because there are three things that decide what the individual rating is. At this stage, by just knowing the individual rating, I don't know how I can go back and find out three different parameters, you know, what were these three values that gave me the individual rating. So in this case, it's impossible for me to go to individual sales first and then find find the total sales. So we already get a feeling that this is something we will not be able to do. But still, I'm going to show it to you mathematically that if you try to get your individual total from this formula here, think about getting one individual's sales, you can then rearrange the formula this way. You will do individual ratings multiplied by sigma and then to this you will add mu. Now, to get this individual sale, you need all three of these things. As I said, individual rating is what is visible on the graph. But where will you get the standard deviation from? Where will you get the mu from? And therefore, again, individual sales is not possible for us to find. And if individual is not possible, total sales is out of the picture.
Let's go and mark our answer now. This one is neither of these. It does not support. It does not refute the claim. That's it. Now let's summarize the question. We began by carefully reading every piece of information that was given to us. We read the text and kept visualizing everything on the graph that was given. We understood the structure of this formula. What were the different things that were deciding how individual rating is coming, which was here on the x-axis. And then here we had the frequency or how often each rating was given to the members of the sales staff. Then we went into our statements one by one. We first understood what the choices meant. This in itself involved good translation skills. You had to understand what these were. Then we looked at each claim one by one to see where is it that we have proof for or against it or none of those. Now, total members, when we wanted to find that was easy to read because the heights of the bars give you nothing but number of members. But when you came into the second question, which tried to compare sales from one year to another, that was impossible because sales was just one of the parameters. And here we actually had three things that together gave us individual rating. And it was individual rating that we had on the graph. So that complete ownership of the data set made it very easy for me to understand what is it that I can read, number of employees, versus what is it that I cannot read, total sales. And that's it.